Yeah, I still owe you some, though. I, I miss you. I miss you, CK. So at least I could get a sticker. This one. This one. This one. Welcome to What the Heck. Hopefully you can hear me because everything's messed up in this new room. But, new room. Today we have Bartok, CK, and Stu J in the Heck House, I guess. Um, yeah, let's do super fast intros. Like, who are you and uh, what are the most takes you've done on like trying to record a track? Let's start with Bartok. Let's just go clockwise. I can't hear Bartok. We can't hear yeah. Bartok at all. Oh, sorry about that. I muted yeah. myself while I was trying to so finish my So two takes on answering this question. <laughs> right. <laughs> my name is Bartok, and I can't follow instructions. Um, <laughs> and most takes? Um, boy, I don't know. I'd say if I don't have something after like the tenth take, I give up and move on. Oh yeah, <laughs> one of the ten is yeah. really good enough, right? Right. CK, how many? Got? Uh, so I did three takes for my modular world because me and Jono were going back and forth on it. Uh, normally, just one take always. Recently, I've been trying to. My goal for this year is to actually do a produced track, so I've been working on figuring out exactly how I want to organize that track, and that's resulted in a bunch of practice runs, but not really, I just did my first, okay, I've set everything up in the Akai Force and everything else to record the take, and I did a full take through. But I did like two takes previously where I'd sent copies of it to Traversi, and, and I was like, hey, does this suck? Do I need to add this here? I know my levels are off on this, you know, and was just getting feedback. Um, so I guess three? About three. Three. How many layers of a Tootsie Roll? <laughs> anyway. I think three Three is appropriate for CK samples, a third. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 Um, hey, everyone. Stu J. Um, usually not too many, but for January, I did January this year. And for some of them, I did, um, I put my piano into modular. Uh, into a little modular um, skiff on top of the piano. And for those, some of them were 10 or 15, but that was because I messed up playing. You know, I made mistakes <laughs> or I didn't like how it sounded. So for me, the most is probably, you know, 10 or 15. 
But and then there's the one day straight, straight eat, modular, you know, I'll just one or two. What that's the case? There's the one day of January where you cheated and you used your pre recording from uh, Modular World to qualify. That was that's that was not it. That was not a cheat for two reasons. It was now. recorded in it was recorded <laughs> in January, and I did record something else that day that I didn't post. So. Oh. College Nicolapolis <laughs> in five minutes. <laughs> uh, on back seven, uh, I make bad music, and uh, I think the most that I've done is is it's got to be up around fifteen, and it's it's, it's got to be a tie between. Uh, I did a set for New York Modular Society, um, where I was playing three different sort of tracks on the pyramid because the pyramid has a like you can't load another like project and I ran out of like sequences essentially so um, instead of fumbling through it live which I normally would do fine uh, I like felt the need to re-record so that one was probably 15 or so takes or the three minute um, three module challenge earlier this year I took a, sh a ton of takes on that goofy ass little two module thing um, yeah I hate re-recording <laughs> Like, there's always that one thing I want to do, and if I miss it, or, like, you know, you go to do the drop, and you're, like, a half a second late, so that first kick misses. Death. <laughs> yeah. By the way, heck, Death I've never breath. seen your setup. I've never seen your setup with the lights on, I don't think. This is a different room. Uh, is it a different room? First, I was going to say, it looks totally heck? different. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. there's no, you notice there's there's no um, vents above my um, modular and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all that. I yeah. actually got the washing machine's gone. My ass off. Yeah, the washing machine's gone. So I, I took the got tape it. off of that and, and, and painted it on uh, this, this road case I'm building. Um, just, you know, for continuity, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Yeah, so. And, and this light, uh, most of the light is coming from a window. The light in here actually really sucks. It's worse. Uh, partly because if I stand up straight under it, I will hit the lamp. You notice the bulbs are exposed because the dish that normally covers it was broken by my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the the take I just did before this, I actually set it up so I multi-tracked everything, as many of the stems as it made sense to, into the Akai 4. So theoretically, I should have the mix down and each of the individual tracks recorded into the force that I could then drop into Ableton or on the force and fiddle with. But I'm not sure if I set it up right. i got to check later. We'll see. That's, yeah, that's rough. I, I mean... For for a long time, I recorded all of my stuff on the on the Zoom L12 multi-tracked as much as possible, um, and ultimately I found out <laughs> that in every instance I just take the the mix out and upload it because oh. I, I don't have I don't care. <laughs> yeah, the mix out I had going back in because now I'm using the Zone mixer externally to do all my mixing and. Yeah. So the mix out from the zone, it has a straight record out uh, left to right jack that I had piped straight back into my 4MS wave recorder that's in rack. So that's pretty, it's basically like a little handy zoom recorder, but it's built into my rack. So just, you know, record straight the whole stereo set. And that's what I just uploaded to eMastered. <laughs> CK, are you, are you recording directly into the Forces Arranger or are you recording into Clips? into a ranger so what i do is i i basically set up um uh, my full like the part of the performance that is in the force which right now i i am using the force on this track i was using the force for drums basically and i was not using the queen of pinnacles like i normally use um uh, and i've got it set up where the queen of pinnacles is kick and the rest of it in two tracks in the zone and i can switch basically the usb uh, in from the force, so I can either have the force drums kick and extra drums in those same two lanes, or I can switch over to analog and do the Queen of Pinnacles, uh, whatever. So, um, primo. so on the force, I have uh, audio tracks set up that are pulling in uh, the raw audio from the zone because the zone 
The zone has two audio cards in it, and so I'm using one of those audio cards as the um, thing to hook it up into the Kai Force so that both it sends stuff to the Kai Force. So I'm, I'm mixing things directly from the, the Force into the zone. And then also, so, uh, it's acting as an, uh, was an audio interface recording back into the Force. Do okay. you use the clip functions much in the Force? Uh, sometimes, basically when I'm doing, like, when I want to create a bunch of loops, I use the clip functions more than anything else. Like, if I'm trying to, you know, build samples or do some loops. But I, I haven't done as much of that recently because I've been trying to do more of the performative Eurorack yeah. and drums their flow and just recording that out into Ranger mode. Although I don't think the mix recorded properly in the Ranger mode, so I'm glad I had the backup of the of the 4MS sampler cool. there. So, Yeah, your, work, your workflow seems to be coming together really nicely. Yeah. yeah, theoretically I should be able to box all this up, go to an actual place, perform, and record <clears throat> the whole live while I'm performing and have a whole copy of everything. That's ideally what I want to get this to. That's that's cool. Um, that. Should we should we talk about? I mean, we have a limited time with CK today. Um, before we, we lose you for the day. Yeah, uh, go Hex, ha, Apex. I, I can't pronounce the name of it. Apex. Apex. Hapax. Hapax. How would French people say it? It, hot box. Like scorp- I think that's that's what we gotta call it. Right, yeah, right? Hot box. Hot box. <laughs> it's probably hot Shout box. Out to Jeremy from Red Meets Recording. Because <laughs> it's the duochronic sequencer or whatever. Um, polychronic. Yeah, polychronic. <laughs> yeah. So that is out, and um, I know at least the left half of the screen is really fired up about it. Uh, but I, I feel like we could talk about sequencers because there's, there's there's some interesting stuff. Bartok's gone through like a ton of in the box sequencers that I know of. Uh, Stu J has the perfect sequencer, uh, sort of. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and clearly CK and I are unhappy with all sequencers. Uh, that's not true. I have the same perfect sequencer Stu J has that I really like. I just was like, once I saw the Hotbox announced, I was like, oh, I gotta try that thing. It just looks fun. Like, cause like I, part of my heart. Will always be in love with the old school Tenorion that uh, yeah uh, came out, and I like the one of the things I like about the Vector is using the uh, the grid with it to program it, just like a Tenorion, and and the Hotbox is like a big Tenorion plus it has uh, it has sort of an A B lanes thing in terms of you can have two two totally different copies of what you're doing that you can switch between that matches up with the a b ness that's in both the force and in the zone in the in the dj yeah. mixers approach that i'm taking so i'm like so with all that i was like yeah let's get it like nobody like it's gonna like i i had the funds to do it and i was like if i don't like it i'll be able to sell it no problem and i, I can probably use it with the vector and do some really cool things i'm surprised stu j hasn't bought one yet <laughs> CK is trying to get me by gift. By gift. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> buying anything in 2022. I don't have the perfect sequencer yet. I have the perfect combination of sequencers. I don't have the one perfect. So <clears throat> right now, I've used a lot. Um, um, but what I'm using primarily now is w- one of three. So <laughs> the easiest thing to jump to, if I'm just doing something quick and dirty, is the Pittsburgh Lifeforms Micro Sequence B. I mean... It's it's like the best of the original Metropolis, I think, minus, a, you know, and it's a quarter of the size. Um, uh, so that's the quick and dirty one for in the box sequencing and generative uh, exploratory experimental stuff. Vector um, plus its percussion is a ton of fun with the launch pad. So I do a lot of, you know, live live performance of percussion with Vector. For melodic, I'm kind of on Digitax now, um, playing oh, yeah. keyboard, playing keyboard into that, or um, you know, programming melody into that, and then with a MIDI to CV converter, I happen to use Shuttle Control, um, getting melody on the Eurac. Because I find with Vector, it excels at evolution, generative, that type of thing. But for intentional melody, I still have difficulty with it. I know that now, going back a couple months now. 
there have been some changes to the firmware where um, you can record off grid. And I'll confess, I haven't really tried it yet. Um, <clears throat> but I still find that uh, nothing kind of beat, I, I sold it, but nothing beat the Keystep Pro for me when it came to like intentional melody, which is, you know, recording something into it. Um, yeah, you're a keys guy too, though, so you can play. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm like me coming at it from power chord guitarist. Uh, what is it? There it is. I can't point the right direction. There it is. Power chord guitarist, and not really like I can hear things and go like that sounds good, but I can't read music or anything like that. Um, one of the things that interests me about the hapach, I'm gonna say it that way. It's <laughs> The one thing, one thing that interests me about it is it actually tells you, like you can not only can you set it up with a quantizer and everything, but it tells you what you're playing. Like if you play a chord, it tells you on screen live what. And I'm like, I could actually learn something. Let me oh, get this cool. thing. I could learn something, you know. So that that part of it really made me go, oh, cool. I need this no matter what because it'll help me yeah. get better at putting this stuff together. Because right now, like I. Like I'd say, the vector actually is really good at melodies because I can dial in notes and I know what, I know, I know what the letters mean and how the things sound. Although I don't have all the, <laughs> although I don't know the keys part of it. So like, so being able to dial stuff in is is really cool on the vector. But I found myself, it, it's very similar to I used to have the ER uh, 101 and 102, and it's very similar in terms of the you can do really rich compositions and dial things in, but there's some work to it. There's less work than there was on the ER 101 and 102 where you really have to develop a lot of muscle memory to figure out how to do everything there, whereas uh, the vector is much more immediate. But it doesn't feel like I'm playing it because I am dialing it in. So it, like having something like the hapach to, uh, <laughs> to play on in a pads tutorial sort of way and learn uh, stuff seems cool. Yeah, I want to loop back to the learning stuff. Bartok, what are you using for sequencers currently? Um, the Erica Synth Black Sequencer. For, you know, I use that for um, all my melodic stuff, and then combined with the uh, WMD Metron for the triggers. Uh, yeah. that's, that's a solid combo, I think. I mean, that's, that's what's on my list. Uh, I just got I spent a bunch of... I just got the Metron, and like <laughs> clearly, I don't know what I'm doing with it because it's only been in there for like a day. But um, I'm really excited to start messing with that, and the, the you know ES Black um, will we'll soon be following. I hope. Um, yeah, I had Black Sequencer and loved it before I got the Vector and the Drum Sequencer, and I love the Drum Sequencer. I sold the Black Sequencer. The Vector can do what both those sequencers can do together, except not as many outs as the uh, Drum Sequencer. I kept the drum. Well, that's yeah, yeah. The the, the vector's only two two CV two gate, right? Well, with the Without expander, the expander. You can yeah, yeah. With the expander, you get like you can have two drum tracks basically that'll cover uh, eight eight drum patterns and then uh, eight drum signals and then uh, what is it four six six CV outs other with 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 uh, with velocity as well as gate and CB. There yeah, it is with the expander oh. and then the new black panel. So is yeah. the expander that just a shitload of jacks on the left? Correct, and the MIDI Sockets. and the, the yeah. MIDI ports. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Sorry about the lighting, folks. And hey, no worries. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. That's cool. I should uh, look up the vector just out of curiosity. Um, yeah, check out check out Jim Coker's on the five twelve on the five twelve YouTube channel. Jim Coker did a, a series of deep dives that are with, okay. with very special guests. One of them was me, but uh, no, they're great. <laughs> I learned a lot about. Them. <laughs> All right, so so the 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 hot box, the chord mode, or not not chord mode, but like the the, the fact that when I like you know, hit some random pads on there and get a chord that I don't know the name of. And it's like, this is a blah, blah, blah. That's pretty cool to me. Cause if anyone watching in the future has ever played a guitar, like, or learned the guitar, like you don't learn, like, this is this, you know, chord, you're like power chord, boop, 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 boop. And, you know, you just play the shit out of it. Like every, every, I, I was both excited and let down, uh, in, in high school when I started guitar that, 
uh, every song that I wanted to play was like the, the same chord. <laughs> like it's like the same chord, per, different progression, you know, all the time. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't even know what it is. It's just a what fifth or something. I don't know. <laughs> See, clearly don't know. Any guys have? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Zoe Meets World is asking about the M8 tracker and sequencer. Yeah, I had one. I had one for a hot second, but I, uh, I, uh, I didn't. The tracker mentality does not work in my head. Like doing a tracker type of sequencing, so I ended up uh, trading it with uh, Traversi for her uh, OPZ, which has been cool. Oh. I'm I'm thinking of doing the opposite. Like my Z is getting some dust, and I've been playing with some Game Boy tracker type things and um, wasting money basically. And, and my buddy uh, uh, Stephen, uh, all my friends are since that guy. He's like, just get the M8. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> stop. It's really cool. It's that guy's cool. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm I pre-ordered it. I'll get it in July and. Um, I assume if I like it, because of the way it's built and sort of, uh, I think, clamshell PCBs similar to Basil or something, um, if I really like it, I would, I would, you know, build a Cosmo adapter and make it a primary sequencer, but we'll see. Maybe a secondary, I'm not sure. And it's just I'm, one guy making them, right? It is. It is. A Trash trash 80, I think. And yeah. uh, there's some really cool bits to it that appeal to me. One, the tracker is a new flow. Like, that's not something that I particularly have enjoyed playing in terms of, like, live. Like, I like being able to sort of switch mute groups and things like that. And the tracker stuff I've used before, I haven't been able to do that. This seems like it, it may be able to do it. Um, but if not, it'll just be a glorified sampler because I really wanted something small that handles stereo samples that I can play like a piano um, and that I can have basically an unlimited amount of samples in there that I could swap between really easily. Uh, and the reason is I like oscilloscope music and um, I don't want to like do it through my computer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about it on multiple fronts. It's got some like cool stuff in there. I got some various like you know chip tuning synths, and uh, there's some mutable instruments, voices in there too. Uh, yeah. Some people have had issues getting MIDI over USB. Um, I don't know that I would need MIDI over USB. That's that's the thing I'm I'm not sure about, and I won't know until I have hands on. Uh, I think it does have like TRS jacks for. Uh, MIDI out and so I'm hoping it yeah. plays well with like uh, my favorite MIDI is like the stupid MIDI cables that are huge. Um, MIDI over USB has been very unkind to me. How does it? Um, have, has anyone here used the Mate the M8 whatever uh, and the NerdSec, which I think that's also a tracker style, right? The NerdSec is a tracker style. It's on my list, but I think that's something that if I like. Get annoyed at one of the sequencers I have, I'll swap it out and sell it for and pick up a, yeah. a, a nerd set because um, that does seem like a good balance of MA um, and your around. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's on my list for early next year to, to dig yeah. into. I like Where the expanders too. That with list it. Now, CJ. It's not too big. Well, okay, my, my gas list for 2023, honestly, <clears throat> doing this no new gear experiment has been kind of eye opening. It, I've identified what I want but also really what I need. And what I need that I don't have, and I used to have, I've had a bunch of them, is a standalone dedicated quantizer. Not the not the giant one that I used to have that killed my workflow. My fault, not its fault. Um, but just like a, like a, I don't know, the ADAC or maybe the new shack mat, something with, I have an ornament in crime and it works. The, the uh, quantum main works. But you know, it's very menu-y and uh, not really performative for that reason. So quantizer, and then um, NerdSec, uh, a couple things from Instro, honestly, like utilities um, that I saw Antone using that seemed really handy. And then I'd like to get a sequential OB6 synth that's non-Euro rack, but we could set yeah, that yeah, aside. Yeah. Right. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, talk. What's on your wish list? <laughs> Let's go over current um, wish lists. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything on my wish list. Um, I've been, you know, I recently tried that um, Hummingbird triple wave oscillator. Yeah. Um, and I, I wasn't too happy with it. Um, mostly the, the biggest thing is like, it's, it's a digital oscillator, so it's tuned to, uh, to C and you can't change that. Um, you can't that, like micro tune it, like you can't um, match yeah, I, I, the pitch your other stuff is. Right. So, um, and then I replaced it with the Starling um, Oscillator 3, which um, I just got last week, so I'm still trying to learn it. But other than that, um, my focus is just to figure this out. And, um, you know, I'd like to get a long set prepared. So I need to work on that. I think the um, long set is, is hard to do. Like, let's loop back around to that. They're one, it's one of the reasons I'm really excited about the Haypacks is being able to load up projects uh, while I'm playing a project. Um, uh, yeah, CK, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, um, yeah, I'm working on a long set too. Like because I'm supposed to play, there's a um, charity thing in Austin on April 20th that I'm going to play. So if anybody's in Austin on April 20th and wants to play as part of a thing, uh, it's for, uh, it's, we'll be performing for a bunch of homeless people who are being fed by us at the same time. Uh, I'm going to be playing, we'll, we'll have some sort of amphitheater. All the stuff's just coming together for the planning of it right now, but I'm looking for volunteers to play alongside me. So, uh, so let me know, hit me up if you're in the neighborhood and want to, it's a Wednesday, so it's weird timing, but you know. yeah, it could be a fun road trip, but I don't know. I am preparing for my first, you know, in-person set ever, which is why there's that big smiley face right there is because I need to bring like, uh, like some of like this stuff, like this is the bottom half of that case. Um, so I'm like building a, a way to transport it set up quickly but yeah long sets are hard like I don't know what I'm gonna do like I have to get creative with fills because currently on the on the on the pyramid when I load up a new song playback stops um, or worse stutters or something crazy right so I can either do like that like <laughs> rock star thing where you talk to the crowd while trying to like <laughs> when you dive the knob in an encoder like how's everybody doing <laughs> you know like like grandpa heck over here um and the hay, the hay packs may resolve that we'll see but uh or i can get creative and like hit the mega drone in between and you know keep some audio going or get a get a hype man to jump around i gotta get a hype man yes that's yeah. that's well, all i wish for gear how many tracks do you have on like the pyramid even because like uh the way i have set up my system now to be able to play a longer set is uh and it's largely because i'm using a dj mixer so now i have like two lanes in the dj mixer that are fed by these two switches that i bought they're called uh they're the bear what do they call the switch with a two in it it's bear bear modular i think is their name yeah. uh and uh it's they're just manual switches stereo one stereo to four stereo ins or reverse you can do it either way and so I have two of those, and so I have basically four different options on one stereo out going into one of the channels of the mixer, and then I got another four options going into another stereo out, and then I have those set up in the mixer as A, B that I cross fade between. So I can like have, right. you know, have lane, I can basically have uh, track A with two totally different things running in sequence on those two things and have it, you know, and crossfade from A, from one to two, and then switch, uh, switch one to go to B, and then crossfade back yeah. over there, and switch two to go to B, and then cross switch over there. And so that gives me the ability to basically have a whole pyramid of different leads that are going just through a few sequences that are running that I pre-programmed that I can ping pong between and then it's just a matter of changing up the drums on the fly and switching up some sort of bass line that I have going separately you know so uh, so that's that's the way I'm kind of trying to manage it right now in plotting out how do I do like hour-long performances versus rambling 
40 minutes of CK just experimenting. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, I can... I think online and streaming, I'm totally comfortable streaming, like, essentially the same song, right, like, for an hour. Like, I'm fine with that. It's fun. Um, I think for something in person, I, I need to do a little... <laughs> <laughs> a little more than that. So uh, to answer your question more directly, the, the, the Pyramid has 32 different tracks, which is twice as many as on the hay, hay packs, right? I typically only use around 11 of them. Um, usually less. But 11 have stuff that I regularly use. Uh, the limitation, and, and per track, you have patterns. Uh, by default, it's set up so it's just one pattern per track, but you do this little hotkey thing and all of a sudden you um, open up the, the, the ability to do, I think 30, you have 32 patterns per track that I can switch between. And then the thing that's really the biggest limitation for me is the essentially the song mode or sequence mode. On that, I have 32 possible sequences. Um, which are, you can think of as like MIDI mute groups, right? Like on, if I hit the first one, it's got like whatever patterns and stuff on or off uh, for like an intro and like, you know, somewhere in the middle is like some climax. -y stuff. Like you can change everything. Sort of similar to what you saw with the, the hot box workflow, but it's limited to 32. And that's where I hit a wall with 32. Um, if I'm doing fast paced music, which people get tired of faster, um, like, like I can't do like 160 BPM, same track for like 20 minutes. It gets a little repetitive um, without getting super creative with like audio, uh, modulation, that kind of stuff. Um, it, it means I'm, I'm about to down to about 20 to 30 minutes before I have to change, uh, projects. Um, I could try, like, there's a really clever workaround that you're sort of, um, inspired where I, I have a, a MIDI out A and MIDI out B and I could set up a basically mirror, uh, set of, of of tracks and their own patterns and you know either build or get like a midi switcher right like and i could switch between a to b instantly and like beyond like essentially a second song in the same song you know and that would that would get me a little further for sure i didn't think about that that's smart but as far as like mixing from a to b that's that's a little trickier because i tend to use like Cosmo's big and clunky and there's not a lot of like like it's a big machine with essentially yeah. like three voices or something so like yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, I don't know I'm hoping the, the hay pack solves all my problems because I'm really excited with the the two projects at once thing for two reasons one I can just like seamlessly go into the next song without pausing and two, uh, the idea of like, I don't know if you've listened to like, or been to if you're lucky, like a Daft Punk concert or something like that, where they're mixing, like remixing their own tracks together. And the Hay Pack sort of allows that from like a MIDI standpoint. That's pretty cool. Cool to me to be able to sort of do that. Play both at once. So I'm curious to see what I can do with that stuff. Uh, and another person pointed out, because you can load two projects at once, like if I run out of tracks, mm -hmm. I can just load up a second, like, you know, sibling project and add more tracks. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see how it works in terms of maybe being something that hands-on I can use to control both things in the modular and the Akai Force. Like right now... I use the Akai Force and I use the modular, or I use the Akai Force sometimes to control the modular, but the Akai Force, just because of how I find myself doing more jumping around to different views of the Akai Force to do things like record and stuff, then I use it very performatively. And I'm wondering if this will allow me to be more performative with the Akai Force than I am right now. Like, I don't know, that just made me, me not practicing the Kai Force performatively as much as I can, because, like, Stu J rocked it out in my hotel room at KnobCon, and I was like, oh, he actually played it. <laughs> and then he got and, one. And, I, and, and then I got one, and I have not recaptured that magic yet. I'm still wrestling with it. <laughs> <laughs> still wrestling with that damn deal. Akai Force. A love-hate relationship, I, I mean, for sure. Like, my biggest beef with sequencers is, like, thinking about playing live. Um, 
and and any any like it's I don't mind menu diving for stuff that's like set and forget like you know setting your MIDI configuration or shit but like if I want to do stuff performatively that should be pretty fast I'm hoping the Hapax is pretty good the pyramid is okay at that Hapax is a little more um, visible what you're doing uh, I don't know. <sighs> I think my favorite's the OPZ though. Like you've tried it now at CK. Like I love, I love the effects. Like the, they're my favorite part of it. Like the the synths in it are like okay. I've tried a bunch of them, and you know you can make them sound good. But like the filters okay. Like everything is okay. <laughs> Sampler is pretty good. But like performance effects are like the magic for me, where you can do like tape loop stuff instantly. You can do stutters like. Uh, you know all sorts of like <laughs> build up effects like uh it's it's super cool and and i would love more sequencers to focus on that like the most i i've seen like the typical like bottom bottom of the barrel effects that you get with any sequencer i've tried is like a loop or like <laughs> note repeat well <laughs> you know it, it speaking of the akai force then if you think about its price and now i'll be on the love side of it instead of the hate side of it um, first of all, it's a, an extremely powerful sequencer. It's got CV out, um, and it's got all those effects and more because it's you know part of the Akai MPC family. Yeah. Um, really worth considering, especially for the price. If you think about other things that cost a thousand or eleven hundred bucks in Eurorack versus what you're getting with the Force, yeah. um, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, like every time I want to buy a new piece of gear, I'm like, but wait the force to do that like anything that's not exactly. your rack like everything that like i mean honestly like every single because recently i was watching somebody had like a uh a 909 a new 909 like a, a rebuild of an old school 909 and i was like but i can literally load up a dozen different 909 sound packs you know <laughs> and play them just like a 909 and like do you know and it's like there's so many options with the force; it's ridiculous. So I'm, I'm kind of like I've started to like really. And I started using it for drums too because I realized, you know, just using the Queen of Pentacles for as much as I love it, and as much variety as it does give me, that's limiting. And it's good to be limited, but like if I want to layer on some extra drums, or if I want to layer on some interesting rhythms, uh, I can do that without having to spend thousands of dollars on a whole extra rack that's a drum rack next to everything that I'm doing and I can still record a bunch of the drum sounds I make on my ear rack into samples that I put in the force and then all of a sudden are easily playable just like any any old school MPC drum machine. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the, 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 the thing about the Akai Force uh, is, is not, I mean, I think it's an amazing machine. It's that I have a vendetta against like pads. I hate pads. Um, Oh really? Care, Tell uh, me about why. That's interesting. Why? Uh, multiple reasons. W one, they're flaky. Like they will get dusty, and I'm sure you've experienced this on some machine or another that has pads where you start getting like double hits or mm -hmm. worse, like missed hits or stuck notes. And that's a, a thing that I've seen the most with pads. I just do not like them. Um, Didn't you just buy the hapach? Yeah, and I'm moving back to that. So the reason I got the the hot box, the hot box, <laughs> the hot box has pads, a zillion pads, uh, is because I'm very familiar with the pyramid, and it's essentially like a pro pyramid. Um, like it's an upgrade. Like if I like it, I'll probably just like sell my Doesn't pyramid. The pyramid have pads. It I'm not does. buying your how much you hate it pads does. store. Right, but so here's my thing. I, I I provided a lot of feedback to Scorp whether they wanted it or not. Um, and one of the things I kept pushing for is, continue to push for, is like, I want mechanical key switches. Like, I think the digit, the dig attack, right? Like, those are mechanical keys. Like, they're not necessarily like keyboard keys, but like, they're clicky keys, right? None of them are pads. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna be significantly easier to maintain, clean, whatever. It's not gonna break very easily. Uh, there's been a trend of people using mechanical key switches from like keyboards. I think in the same space, like if they'd made that with those, I would be much happier with it. Cause a, it's 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 not even velocity sensitive that I'm aware of. 
uh, they they got around that by like t- saying like oh well since we have a kajillion pads this corner is going to be like this strong with different velocities yeah. in this rectangle <laughs> like the, the each force, pad is the a force velocity. is fully velocity like yes. that's one of the things about it is the velocity on the force like you can sit there and load up like a 16 pattern of hats and just run your finger and push down harder in different parts to do a nice variated, you know, hats pattern, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you get and a deck saver to keep the dust off. <laughs> to protect I should things. get a deck saver with this because my, uh, yeah. sorry, future buyers of my pyramid. And get a vinyl strap with your face on it too, like I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, Robbie has a good point too. Like the thing I hated the most on the pyramid is actually the touch. It's actually more like a trackpad than a touch screen, but touch screens and trackpads I don't love uh, for a lot of different reasons. In this case, it was just super flaky and I don't know if it was the altitude or what. Um, and so I just, thankfully the, the pyramid builders had like put in a thing so I could turn it off so that like when I'm playing the screen isn't constantly getting taken over with like assign x to the trackpad like because it thinks so you you hate the force because not only is it a ton of pads it's a touch screen as well and you've got to rely that's that's my point you you know i don't i don't hate the workflow i don't hate what it's capable of like i think it's an amazing machine but it's one where i definitely would need to try it for like a month yeah uh, Yeah. to see if i would i would jive with it and i would i would definitely get a uh uh whatever deck saver whatever you call those things like, exactly. I have no problems with anything else that doesn't have pads. Uh, it's just the pad devices. And, like, the Drum Brute Impact has pads, but, like, I don't touch them, so we're good there. Um. <laughs> yep. And that, that thing lost, might have We lost CK. Uh, yeah, CK said he had to run early, so I don't know if that's what's happening or what. But um, Okay. Yeah. I was generally hit for a second. I'm back. Okay. Yeah, so like I, I might like the force. I don't know. I, I, I think there's a lot of functionality in there. I would really love. Like it sounds like, uh, like I haven't looked into it thoroughly, but it sounds like there's like a loop mode where you can essentially do like the yes. guitar thing where you like play over yourself or like in this case you can create a, probably more like a live Ableton live set uh, where you can record a bunch of loops and play them independently and randomly throughout your your stuff to spice things up and that's pretty cool like that's that's hard to do yeah the the forces sweet spot i think is like if you want to build if you want to build a sample pack off of something that you have it's very quick to set an eight bar loop on or of a, a note playing on a you know and then and have one track controlling that note playing in your modular and then just tweak the knob a little bit and record the next one and then tweak the knob and just hit a pad and record and record and you can quickly build a whole set and then you can take all of that and reorganize it into like a an actual like NBC style like drum kit which is yeah. pretty cool yeah and i've seen i think i've seen people like sampling and chopping up drum tracks and things like that uh with an insane amount of ease on on actually many of the akai devices so that's pretty i'm sure that is part of it too like if I dropped in a drum track, I can quickly slice it up and then play the drums individually, that kind of thing. Yeah, if you look at uh, wait, what's his name? I'm trying to think. Uh, Ansom, A N S O M E. He's like a pro uh, DJ performer. He uses the Force and Modular in his live techno sets, like an hour long stuff, and it's it's impressive the way he has everything lined up and what he's doing. So. Yeah, there's another guy. I'm just I forget his name. I'm looking for him. He he's probably to me the most impressive user of the force I've ever seen. Oh, he goes by Younger. Y O U N G R. Y O U N G R. Check out what he does with the Akai Force as the hub of his studio. It's ludicrous. It's wild. That's cool. <clears throat> Bartok, you mentioned getting ready for like playing longer or trying to play longer performances um what kind of tricks are you doing to make that happen like with the metron you're sort of limited to you know a limited number of variations and things like that and i think you could probably with using all 16 tracks like pop some jacks over to start like other sequences or something like that but yeah i mean there's yeah, there's a lot of different tricks, you know, the, the variations and then moving jacks over is, is one thing. The variations I find, you know, really powerful because you've got yeah. five, five different ones. 
Um, and what I usually do is the last one is always empty. So I can always switch to like the empty um, track, which is still keeping in time with the black sequencer while I either change things over or uh, if I want to switch then the black sequencer to like something more drony and keep the drums out for a while then it's mm -hmm. it's a really easy trick to do um, nice. but you know I, I don't know yet I, I mean that's some of the, the ideas that I have and another one would just be you know switch on the fly to load a new a new bank um, but for what I do having those five variations is, I think is is still a lot to to get you to 40 minutes to an hour uh, yeah. but part part of it is going to be timing you know uh, on this on the Erica sense uh, being able to load up a new um, a new bank of projects and I'll have to that's not something I've experimented with so I'll have to try that and see how it is switching it and if it stays live um, you know and I don't have any stuttering issues Right now, mostly everything I've done, you know, 20, 30 minutes is using um, eight uh, saved projects just on, on one bank. So Erica, since the, uh, Robbie will correct me because I might explain it wrong, <laughs> but, but you can load up, um, uh, you can load a, a project and each project can have 16 different um, iterations of that, like different patterns saved. Like patterns so, for track yeah so on uh, no not per track P patterns per project so oh, okay. like once okay. once if one song is a project then I can have 16 different variations that I just switch for then usually I, I'm doing oh, okay. like eight I'm usually using eight to ten of those so um, I'll have to see how to do it where I can change and you know keep things muted and move over but everything's in rack i don't have any outboard gear you know that so you're, you're using something else for drums i'm using the the metron wmd metron yeah. so like uh then then what i i like what i would recommend doing whenever you decide to switch songs is actually like what i tend to do for transitions where i gotta do something like that is i have something droning on whether it's some distortion or some like you know some oscillator just making some noise and then I just make sure the beats yeah. consistent so if you still have your kick going at a regular rate and you can just drop it down to just the kick and then load up right. the other thing as long as it doesn't cause a clock signal to go out and mess mess things up that can be yeah. a good enough transition to allow you that time to uh, load another thing yeah okay yeah I started trying to do some of that stuff but I, I I ran into like some of the issues you're alluding to where if when you load the project like if the master clock is the thing loading a project if there's a slight stutter um, or like it comes in halfway through the right the, the drum sequence or something like there's there's a little bit of trickiness to it but I think totally doable and if like even if you do come in halfway through the, the you know the drum sequence it's, it's fine just hit the reset at the right time right <laughs> or, or send, send a reset signal try to you know yeah. Time it. The other problem I have is like with the Zadar is to to load the new patterns on that. You have to time it right because uh, it takes a little it takes a little stutter to load. Mm. So. Yeah, I just I just switched away from Zadar to I may keep I still have it so I may reload it in my rack alongside this but I just got the uh, quad ADS ADSHR from. Uh, Maleko? Is it Maleko? What is this thing? Yeah, I the think that's what you got. Yeah, the quad envelope from Maleko. And it's really, I really am enjoying it quite a bit. It's nice, uh, you know, being able to shape the exact thing you want. It's not got all the complexity and coolness that the Zadar has in terms of for if you're doing longer droney things, and that's why I'm not getting rid of my Zadar and I'll, I'll keep a hold of it. But I found that's the one that's the one trade off from going vector from black sequencer is the thing that I loved about the black sequencer is it had built in little ADH ADSR, mm -hmm. you know, envelopes that I would use all the time and not having that I needed something uh, in the rack where I could quickly manually adjust that and Zadar didn't really fit that bill. But 
but yeah, that's that's been working for me. But yeah, that's that's the one. I think that's one of the few things I don't like about the Zadar is what you're talking about right there. Like the kind of like load when you switch stuff up. But that's a great module. Yeah, and, and I may just have to learn because uh, I know that the the black sequencer I can use the mod outputs for for um, gates, and I might just have to learn how to use that instead. And if I do that, then it should all be timed together. Yep. All right, I got to roll, guys. Wife just arrived, and time to pack up the kids to go to the in-laws for a birthday dinner. I mean, lunch. Yeah, fun. <laughs> but, uh, you, guys, you guys have a great day. It was great chatting. I'll talk See to you guys later. See you, See you, CK. Stu J, how is your year <laughs> without buying gear going? I, I, Honestly? I did all, that almost on accident last year. Uh, yeah. So for those so those who don't know, I gave myself a no new gear in 22, 22 challenge, and um, with the, there are some exceptions. So when these when these happen, I don't get I don't want to get called out on it. If something breaks, <laughs> I can I can fix I can pay to fix it or replace it. Um, uh, my wife's allowed to buy me a gift. She hasn't yet, but she's allowed to. And um, uh, I I like to support what the kid puts out, so I'll buy his new module whenever that comes out. And then maybe at the end of the year, but I probably not um, an MPE controller like a Lin instrument. But I think I'll 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 push that to 2023 as well. And the reason I did it, yeah, it saves money and all that. But 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 it it's forcing me to focus on what I've got. And honestly, it's been great. It's been um, you know I will look at new videos. I'll watch the Hey Pax Hey Pax videos as they all start coming out for sure. But for the most part, I find myself watching more videos about stuff I have already, which I found myself getting into that pattern of watching videos, getting excited, buying a module, doing <laughs> a couple patches with it, and then I'm watching videos for the next module, getting excited about that, instead of going back and seeing what people are doing with old gear, you know? Um, and for me, it's been great. Like, my intro is CSL, like, I can now take a week. I just feel like so much less time pressure. I could take a week and just make patches with that and focus on that and really learn the, the deeper routing options on that thing. Um, and it's been great. Um, so yeah, uh, fun to see what's coming out. There's been very little that's come out. That I feel like I'm missing out on, um, Hey pack sequencer looks really compelling. Um, that little M eight tracker looks pretty neat, but, um, otherwise, you know, I, I'm also coming from a position, I have a huge system. So, you know, it's not like I'm, the only thing I'm really missing is a dedicated non-digital, <laughs> non, non, non-screen quantizer, right? Like an instrument right. harmon egg or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so that'll probably be the first thing I get um, next year. But no, it's been good. And, and Bartok, you, you, have, uh, you haven't cycled through modules too heavily over the last year, I don't think. No, no. You know, I'm pretty happy with with what I have. There's been a one, you know, a couple that I've tried just to find something a little different. But you know, one of my my rules was uh, actually that I broke was not to go more than this this one case, and I doubled it. So I'm pretty much with if, if I can't carry it with me um, to play somewhere then it's it's not necessary uh and i'm trying to really stick to that well oh, geez i can't have that rule uh <laughs> <laughs> i can barely lift my stuff um uh yeah i mean th to your point cj like i I'm having a lot of cosmo stuff i can't like watch like <laughs> uh, you know you know any any of the reviewers go through and like here's how to do a bunch of tricks with your cosmo oscillator like um but i have been watching I, I do watch a fair amount of like other similar videos like i'll watch some how people use other oscillators or whatever um and uh just like it's fun to just like get familiar with what you have i haven't felt a glaring need to buy stuff unless it's like a significant increase in my workflow like the yeah. the hay packs isn't exciting to me because it's a big sequencer um, like there's actually things I like the pyramid better for and probably mm. will unless they do an update. But the, the thing that kills me about it is the song loading. Like I just, it's really frustrating to, to load a project up and have playback stop or, um, 
in, in, you know, some cases I want to like save my state halfway through a performance. Like those, those EMS jams where I started out, it was a little jam with one sequence and then halfway through, I'm like, there's something here. I want to save it. But like when I save it, stuttered playback and stuff it like stuff like that just drive me a little crazy so that was the biggest selling point on it for me i was like okay pyramid workflow but can do multiple projects done <laughs> like, yeah. that's all and I you're right like know. you know most manufacturers some things are are definitely performative but i feel like most manufacturers are designing things to be performative alone in your basement you know yeah <laughs> Like um, so when I'm by myself, I can yeah. switch projects and no one like I don't care. Like I'll go get, yeah. uh, you know, I'll go do something else for a second or like I don't mind dead, dead air. Um, yeah. But like in a performance, you want to like keep keep it going. Like it's it's not a rock band where I've got like a hype man or a lead singer that's like, oh, <laughs> how you doing, Denver? You know, like. I'm well, like, you know, remember remember <laughs> last year, uh, Second Breakfast. Second Breakfast would do these kind of elaborate sets all yeah. on Euro rack where there'd be no interruption. It's like five songs in a row. And he did that because he literally had freaking five Hermods and five yeah. of everything. Yeah. Like that's how you accomplish that without a manufacturer taking the time and energy to allow you to load one song while another one's playing. Right. Right. Do that's I how, get he, that's how he accomplished it. <laughs> right. Or four of them, you know, yeah. like depending on how long you want to go. Well, I mean, so, if you have two, right? Like you can you can load up the second project, yeah, hit stop yeah, and yeah, go yeah. like at the same time, boom, and you're on the second, you know, pyramid, right? And that's yeah. essentially what the hay pack's doing. I don't know. Um, well, yeah. that's I mean, the the black sequencer, you know, I I can save, um, I can make changes, and while while it's playing, while it's, uh, I've done that through streams. What what I just haven't tried is completely switching. Um, the bank that's loaded, but Robbie's yeah. saying that it, it should be um, non -inter interruptive as well. But you know, so copying, pasting, I, I'll be doing that live, and um, it it doesn't interrupt at all. Yeah, and that's I mean that's one of the reasons I like the pyramid, and I'll, I'll do a lot of copy paste functions all the time. Um, like I'll copy a sequence from one to the other, maybe transpose it or something. Or something that's kind of fun is to like if I've got. Uh, super simple eight bar sequence where there's a note every quarter note right like i can copy that whole thing and paste it like uh an eighth of a note in or like turn it into 16 notes really quickly just like boom 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 all of a sudden you have like uh the chugging bass you know, in, you know hitting i don't know i love that stuff and it's it's that stuff is performative and in its own way uh but i hate the stopping playback that's like my biggest yeah. Other than the, the you know membranes, but <laughs> that's the biggest downside with the pyramids. Because really. um, like one of the cool things with the pyramid is you can connect like you have thirty two tracks to play with, so like across two uh, MIDI outputs and USB out, so you can have like sixty four different instruments or something insane like that uh, if you really want it. So. Uh, I, I don't know. I love that aspect of it. I don't do that anymore. And I, <laughs> it was only necessary when I had the official firmware on the um, Volca sample. Mm -hmm. Because the Volca sample, was you, each MIDI channel was its own drum. Like, so you had 10 MIDI channels taken up with a single sampler. Um, mm -hmm. Unofficial firmware fixed that for me, and then they came out with a sequel that does that too. So. Yeah, I mean, the Erica Black looks like pretty much what I want. Like, I'm okay with the hay packs for most things. I'm hoping to have, like, my dream is to have something like the OPZ or the M8 to, like, sequence everything from my hand and be like, boop, 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 boop. Um, but the OPZ doesn't like my MIDI to CV, and, you know, the M8 doesn't exist in my hands yet, so. Yeah, I do find sequencers, for me, maybe it's because my background playing keys, um, it's important to me that a sequencer has a ha hands-on outside of the box. I know this is like controversial, but get it out of the box for me. So the reason I like Vector is because of the launch pad integration. And if I'm performing, I want to be jamming on a giant button, you know, giant keys where I don't have to squint. I'm not turning a knob I'm leaning forward. It's right there. Like its own instrument. Like for me, sequencer is all about performance. So, um, 
that's one nice thing about the new Hapax, whatever it is called. Um, I, I do like sequencers out out of the Euro, the small Eurorack format. And I think a good healthy combination of both is fun. Like I built um, yeah. this you know Evil Eye sequencer, which is as stupid as it gets. You know, eight step sequencer, um, you know, change directions, all that usual stuff. But like just having that in the box, like I'm using it for things that I would never like the pyramid could put CV out and things like that, but I never bother. Like it's more fun mm -hmm. to just like dial it in or like I can make it so that like every time a bar plays it, this changes pitch and I could transpose every, you know, like I can do a lot of fun stuff with, with a combination. So I, I like having the combination, but I, I think for the primary yeah. sequencer, I'm, I'm still an out of the box person. Um, I, I only had a couple of days with the Metron, so I don't know for sure yet, but one thing I am noticing is position. Um, because everything's vertical and standing um, in that you know, box there, I think I have to build something like this. You need an angle. Some base to raise yeah. it up. Not just for the angle, no, because I, I actually need the Metron higher. I need it closer uh. to my face, because right now some of the really crucial functions which work flat in front of you at about, you know, like table height or something, um, don't work vertically because like uh, a good example is the, uh, like the fill effects button, which, uh, I don't know if you heard that, the fill effects button, which is really important for loops, rolling, muting, yeah. that kind of I stuff. I used to have a Metron, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I'm standing, the, the encoder above it completely covers where it is. Like I can't yeah. see the knob unless I do this, you know, like, um, so I need it raised up just a little bit so I can actually use some of those controls, um, which I'm not used to. So it's going to be a learning learning curve for me. Um, for sure. And I, and I am going to build, uh, like you said, sort of a, an angled thing like that, but that's going to be filled with performable Cosmo modules, like very, not necessarily sequencers, although the sequencer might fit in there, but more like uh, like joysticks or you know button matrixes and stuff like that. Yeah, I see Robbie and B. Bartok uh, mentioned in the comments Keystep Pro. Yeah, I loved my key, I loved my Keystep Pro for that reason. It kind of ton tons of CV out. It's a nice keyboard, um, but uh, I was I was just running out of space on my desk, and I had to prioritize some other things. And I, I have found that the vector with here's the thing for me, Keystep Pro is great, but you know I've got keys, you know. I've got keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> I've got keyboards, and um, and I wanted I wanted to use Vector, and um, actually wound up selling Keystep Pro to get the Vector with the launch pad, and um, yeah, I, I don't have any regrets about that. It's it's been working out just fine. But yeah, Keystep Pro is phenomenal. Could use some work in the generative department. There are tricks to get it to be kind of generative, but um, to me, the ultimate sequencer would be a combination of Vector and Keystep Pro, where it's got that generative capability, um, but also you could j just really easily play into it. Wouldn't it be cool if Arturia did like, like they've done sequencers, like they've got the BeatStep Pro, they've, they've built in sequencers mm -hmm. to um, the Keystep and the Keystep Pro and that whole line, but like a dedicated sort of controller and sequencer, similar to like, not similar in design or whatever to Hapex, but I find Arturia does a really good job at sequencing. Like the sequencing on the drum brood impact is fun. The sequencing on the the uh, micro freak is really fun and intuitive. The the fact that they pulled in some of the micro freaks cool like spicy stuff into the pro, I think kind of after the fact, as an afterthought, mm -hmm. uh, is also really cool. Like I think they they do a really good job. I. I'm with you. Like, I don't want more keys. Like, uh, um, right now, <laughs> purely for functional reasons, like while I'm writing stuff on this this box here that's got the micro freak in it, I'm using mm -hmm. the micro freak's keyboard uh, in the non-local mode, so it actually can't control the micro freak unless I tell the pyramid to point that way. Um, I'm doing that to like write stuff quickly. Once, once I'm you know, ready for the live performance, I'm going to disable that because one of the funny things about it is if I disable local control, I can't actually even use the cutoff filter on the micro freak until I turn that back on. But I, 
I'm hoping the Haypack sort of eliminates the need for keys for me. Like I really like keys. I think it's the most mm-hmm. intuitive way to program stuff. Like one of the my go-to is to have a keyboard next to the pyramid, push a button while in the sequence mode, and then I'd be like, all of these are that button. You know, all of these are that key, right? Push another key. Now do that. You know, and that's an easy way to do chords and sequences and stuff like that. Um, the Haypacks yeah. hopefully will be eliminate that because it's big enough i hate it on the pyramid that you're, you have one octave and you have to like down yeah one octaves or like remember where you i are. mean i'll just um i'll even take i always keep this handy just a just a key step but, yeah you know and yeah. never I'll, sell I'll hook it up never i'll hook it up to the digi tack i'll hook it up to the to the vector i'll hook it up to anything um when i need a keyboard it's just right here it's so easy um, you know what I want? I want I want an 88 key version of that keyboard, right? Like, no like added this? features. Yes, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but send me the link. It's our, it's the it's got added feature. It's the Arturia Key Lab. I well, no, I have for, the Key uh, Lab. I hate the Key Lab. I really? Flipping well, hate I use, it. I, have the OG I use it for one. orchestral. Like when I do like scoring work, I'll use that. I don't usually use I don't use it for Eurorack stuff at all. Yeah, so let me talk about the Key Lab very briefly. <laughs> okay, it, yeah, I'm intrigued here. I love it. Original generation, and the keyboard is phenomenal. They're like Fatar yeah. keys or something, right? Solid. Like they're, yeah. they're. It feels really nice to play if you like pianos, which is a little different than synths. And I'm not, you know, I I could go either way. I don't care. That mm-hmm. keyboard is nice. The MIDI, like, I want to be able to quickly switch MIDI channels, and it's so convoluted to do that quickly. No, it's the, not. It is. You, it is because you have to like. It's designed for MIDI, like two paths and like gotta go you through got, like. It's so janky. No, you, uh, maybe the, maybe yours is different. There's a button that says MIDI channel. You hold that, and then you got your 16 channels: MIDI seven, MIDI eight, MIDI eleven, MIDI twelve, just like that. Yeah, two it's seconds. not as simple as that. It's super convoluted with mine. I've tried that. I tried. Oh, okay, every trip. maybe you have an older model or something. It's it's yeah. It's the first gen. Uh, oh, okay. The newer one right, I think I is know. better. Okay. Yeah, mine's um, pretty easy sense. in that regard. Uh, I, I don't actually care about any of the knobs or pads, so that's mm-hmm. why I was like, I just want like, I just want the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I, I don't. I don't like even pull it. You know, this players. desk it pulls out, and I don't even pull it out far enough to see the knobs or pads. I don't even yeah. care, um, because if I do that, I'm sitting way too far away from what I'm looking at. So, yeah. you know, I just picked up this um, in 2022. I'm sorry, yeah. 2021, before my No New Gear, um, the Akai MIDI mix, so I could quickly um, map uh, MIDI to any yeah. any of these knobs yeah. and, and have it closer, you know, so I don't yeah, have to and pull that's, out. Yeah, that's a, an a area of products I haven't played around with too much in terms of integration with this monster. Like I saw on the recent Haypax video from Red Meets Recording or Jeremy, uh, that he had something called a fader fox, which was just like, uh, yeah. like sixty knobs or something. Yep. Um, that kind of appeals to me. That like that might be fun in a, like a pseudo permanent setup. Um, but I, I see a lot of people perform with yeah. them. Um, perform with them when they're performing with like Ableton, so they can, yeah. um, you know, map some MIDI controls and have a physical device. Pretty handy for that. And there's stuff I can do. Like there's a ton of MIDI outs on my MIDI to CV. There's there's lots of integrations you can do with MIDI to control the devices. So it'd be pretty fun to to try something like that. Um, I think, but I but I am my my 88 key keyboard is the number one thing on my get rid of list right now. I'm thinking of mm-hmm. actually buying like I don't know entry to mid level like uh, electric piano um, that has MIDI out. Oh, like a Nord, or, like a Nord, or something yeah, something like that, right? Like where my, because my my partner plays piano and she would like to like come in and and you know jam on it. But right now, like with the MIDI thing, you gotta like turn my computer on, like open live and like open a VST <laughs> and like be on the right MIDI channel and like turn all my other gear on so that the through on the MIDI all works right and like <laughs> you know like yeah, it's yeah, an electric yeah. piano with the MIDI that I could switch channels pretty easily like that's good enough for me because then you know it's just play the headphones play the piano um, or I can and I could just never get the audio yeah there are tons of those like stuff. you could get, get a great Yamaha that's so basic but has yeah. MIDI out and you know and their yeah, keyboards are incredible yeah 
Yeah, give me like you know whatever. They probably have like thirty voices each or thirty different like yeah. pianos yeah. each or like some cat sound or something. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of doing as an alternative to the ADA key. It won't be as nice of a key key bed, but I think it'll do what I want. Yeah. Um, because right now I really, really dislike using it. <laughs> I could tell. Because <laughs> it's it's very much designed with like professional piano players that are th thoroughly integrated with Ableton, um, particularly yeah. their studio, like are comfortable with like split keyboard setups. It's a very good split keyboard thing. Yeah, like I said, for me, it's that thing's for almost exclusively for orchestral programming, like playing violins with the right hand and, and tubas with the left or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I don't, if, if I'm putting keys on Eurorack, it's that little arteria key step for sure. Yep, yep. Um, so. B. Bartok, do you use um, keyboard? Yeah, I, I actually, I have the little key step here. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. So I, I use that mostly, like, when I'm trying to come up with something. I'll just have that going MIDI to CV and then run it to through a, a specific voice. And then once I find, you know, something that I like, then I'll, I'll program that into the black sequencer. And then... Mm -hmm. I'll then have that running while I then move it to another voice and then try to find like the bass or whatever. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's, your it's setup, mostly, it, that's yeah, it's, it's setup mostly just had... a find. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's, yeah, it's mostly just a kind of like find, you know, like fine tune whatever I'm working on and, and try to, f and then once I have it set, I, you know, I don't perform with it. It's just to mess around, and then I'll kind of re save the patterns on the sequencer or the notes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is the same setup I've had for, um, I, I'd say, two years now. Wow. Um, That's what you were you performed on that at Antone's house, right? When we did yeah. the um, SoCal. Yeah. Yeah, I recognize yeah. that. It was really great. Uh, Zoe left a comment in the chat. Like one of the downsides of turning off gas is realizing how much is realizing how much money you spend on on chords, um, yeah. and the other stuff you've sort of been sitting on. And I've got to I've got to reiterate like <laughs> it's so expensive to buy cables. Like I always forget about it until I'm like checking out. But it's so expensive, um, and they're like they're worth it. Like I have these really nice Patchworks cables. Let's see, this from Bartok. <laughs> um, that Bartok color match to my other cables, which I'm super stoked about. But like cables are so expensive and I'm already finding yeah. like in this new room, like, oh, sh I need uh, a TRS cable that reaches all the way around the room in a big C shape that's like eight inches shorter than what I, ha I mean, eight inches longer than what I already have. So like, here's a good example that right now, the what I'm listening, <laughs> what you're listening to is coming through this um, quarter inch, female to female uh, to quarter inch to quarter uh, 3.5 millimeter adapters on each end to uh, <laughs> because I ran out of you know yeah. I ran out of all of those pieces so like yeah it's so expensive to get all that, that cabling right um, and even just like setting this up I wanted some shorter MIDI, MIDI cables inside there just for routing purposes to, to take up less space so there's more foam um, <laughs> And it, you know those are you know it adds up. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to take um, a year off from buying buying any major yeah. purchases. This is not so, that year for me. I've been very irresponsible in the first few months of this year. <laughs> uh, I a I finished uh, at some nudging from Bartok. I finished this Eurorack case. That's Cosmo size, so it's giant. I put in a really good power supply, which pricey. Uh, got some cables, pricey. <laughs> got yeah. too many. A WMD modules at once, also pricey and some other stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, I'm gonna have to jump in about 13 minutes. Sorry. Yeah, about I was gonna that. wrap this up. I, I think we've gone over oh, time okay. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. But cables, ca ca yeah, so cables. It's it's one of those things. You know, I was at a Perfect Circuit a couple of weeks ago, and somebody was buying some stuff, and and they they go and they're like, "What are the cheapest cables you got?" And I'm always like, "What?" <laughs> We're spending so much money to like, 
you know, on our gear and trying to hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. you're we're trying to make something, get some, and it's like, and and you cheap out on on these cables that um, you later end up replacing because they've worn out and they don't have, you know, they can't last as long. They um, or some of the cables I've I've torn apart, you know, like the the plugs. Th they use metal that's so thin that just snaps if you like bend it too many times. Yep. Um, so yep. It, it's it's expensive, but it's worth it to get good cables. Yeah, um, for sure, reliable cables. Yeah, and I ch I cheaped out at first too. Like I think that's a good. I think when you're first dipping your toe in synth waters or your rack, like it's like yeah, cheap out on what you can. Like it's gonna you're gonna have to buy more down the line but they're like okay right off right out of the out of the gate uh if you're at uh um shoot what's the name of that store you just mentioned perfect circuit <laughs> if you're at perfect circuit and you're buying like a matrix brute or a poly brute like get a good cable <laughs> 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 like you're dropping 2k on a synth like just you know treat it nice yeah <laughs> take care of the expensive car that you've bought put some decent gas in it you know yeah right <laughs> so, change the oil now and then uh, right you, you, you know you can handle an extra week of ramen or whatever you need to make up for yeah. it you know like that's what i'm doing right now I'm like i gotta save some because <laughs> between the hay packs the wmd and the uh m8 like <laughs> no more purchases for me for a while and i'm already thinking like as i'm starting to build a year access system, i already need this like i already need why like it'd be nice to have a midi to trigger you know module that kind of stuff so i'll have to sit on those for several months <laughs> yeah. i was gonna All say right, speaking let's... of wmd um i was just gonna say a, a shout out i i really love um i went to knobcon last year and i bought the kraken um, uh -huh. or at least ordered there that thing is great yeah. snare module it does so much yes. more than that it's just yeah it's give a little shout out to that module yeah let's see here uh go effects to everything about that module i just um oh you won't be able to hear it because i have the room i can anyway i just got the kraken like it's it's the kraken and the metron were the two things that i really yeah. wanted because the kraken is a very interesting drum I picked up a couple others as well. Like the performance mixer is kind of interesting to me, but expect lots of annoying panning from me in the future. <laughs> oh, did you get did you get the performance mixer? Yeah, I got the performance mixer, Metron, Crater, and Kraken. I'd, really I'd say the performance mixer is the most important module I've got. Yeah. Like maybe you know maybe pans work out, but but performance mixer, it's everything goes through that thing. That thing is you could just crush on it. It's so great. Well, yeah, and one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to do is, is start with what I'm lacking, which I would love uh, basically an in-the-rack drum root in terms of performable drum sounds or mm -hmm. tweakable, uh, and that's sort of what I have, and you need a mixer for that, like to put you know, yep. eight, eight drums into one, one uh, mix, and uh, rather than getting like starting with like the, I don't know, Erica Synth's drum mixer or something like that, might as well just get a proper uh, yeah. mixer, because I don't really need it for other stuff, so... And yeah. I'll probably will at some point need a drum mix, but you know, one thing at a yep. time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and you know, Alex hooked me up. I got a B stock Metron. Oh sweet! Oh nice! Right on. Yeah. Go Alex! So, yeah. So thank you. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do a quick. Uh, yeah, check check out CK Sample in Austin, April 20th. If you're in Denver, I'll be performing at the Black Box on the 18th of this month. And uh, anyone else have anything they want to bump? I don't even care what you bump. <laughs> Patchwork um, cables. Patchwork cables. cables. <laughs> Represent. Uh, like, some of us in SoCal are... Uh, like, I haven't expressed it well enough. Like Here are these big quarter-inch cables that I love from, I think they're Seismic Audio or something, right? These are my patchwork cables. They're the same, nice. just smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. It looks like it's not official yet, but it's probably going to be April 30th. There's going to be a SoCal streaming event. Um, yes. Nobody's been invited to it yet. We don't know who's performing yet, but uh, some of us are putting something together. Um, so stay tuned for that. April 30th. I wonder if I can be in SoCal around there. I might try. 
Come, <laughs> absolutely. Come, come, for sure. We'll take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, everybody. Thank you, CK, yeah. CJ, and Bartok. Well, thank you. Uh, glad thank we you. Got to yeah, like for sure. Out about sequencers for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't have the perfect Take it easy. one, but close. All right, I want to yeah. play some. Uh, I'm not even gonna play this out. Have a good weekend, y'all. <laughs> All right, have a good weekend.